Lions Saints, insane game. I still can't believe it, still can't get over it. A lot to talk about. Could better preparation lead to better starts for the Saints defense? I hope so, because giving up 21 points in about 17 seconds is not a good way to win football games. The Saints suffered their third straight loss and another one score loss this season. New Orleans now <clears throat> drops to five and seven. But before this game, that like the one score loss, like it's it's it is a one score loss. But man, it's just the most different kind of one score loss. You put yourself behind the eight ball 21 nothing in the first quarter and really, really like in the first six minutes. I mean, I say the first quarter it was like the first six minutes you are down 21 nothing. I did Brooke no favors here with the pause. Let me help her Could out. Even get uh, there we go. I mean, there's not a lot of teams in the NFL that if you give the other team 21 points, then you're going to be successful. And especially the Saints who are trying to figure things out. It's just, you know, to say this is just a one-point loss is a disservice. It's a lot of different things at the same time. And that's why I think the game is such a paradox. It's such a... It's such a puzzle piece to try and solve and try and decipher this game because on one hand, yes, right? It's, it was a debacle. It was an awful performance. It, you were down 21 nothing in the first quarter at home. On the other hand, you lose by a, one score against a team that could be the one seed in the NFC, a team that's really good. You know, if you, But that's kind of the same season, ladies and gentlemen. Is that not? Where every game you can say, well— if it wasn't for this red zone turnover or these penalties or this 21 point lead in the first five minutes, if it wasn't for that, we were right in there. You know, if it wasn't for this thing, whether it's Blake Groupies missed kicks or, you know, whatever, if it wasn't for this, we're a really good team. And that's kind of this whole season. The whole season is kind of, if it wasn't for blank, the Saints are really good. And at some point, the season will be over. And we won't be able to say that anymore. I hate that this keeps happening because I do feel like the team is, you know, it's almost like they need like another preseason. They need another training camp. They need another week zero. They need another four games that don't mean anything that they can just kind of work through this, you know. So there are positives we can take from this game. Basically everything that happened when it was 21 nothing. We score and, you know, the way the defense played and the way the offense kind of played and all of that. So it, it's really a game of, like, you got to kind of chunk this game up to that first quarter, and then you have to look at the rest of the game until the car injury. Then you have to look at what happened after that. So it is a complex game to try and break down. To the second half, Saints fans in the building <clears throat> seemingly gave up on this team with pronounced boos in the Superdome anytime quarterback Derek Carr and the Saints offense took the field. Welcome back to the Do Yeah, so for sure. And that's what I think that's what the boos were. The boos were saying the fans were kind of giving up on, on the team. They were giving up on Derek Carr. They were giving up on the offense. They were giving up on the three and outs. They were giving up on the interception. They were giving up on all that stuff. I mean, they, that is what that was. And, you know, we were sitting there in the stands, and I, my, we were kicked back. People around, we were all just, like, laughing, like, can you believe this? The sky is falling. This team is a joke. You know, what are we doing here? How People were getting up. They were leaving. When I went to the bar, uh, people were at the bar. They were just saying, I can't take this anymore. What else can I do but drink? I mean, it, it was that kind of feeling. It was a Titanic sinking. But then... The Saints almost wouldn't let us quit on them. And that's where I think that we had this kind of Phoenix rising moment that really kind of solidified this team was that they could have, it would have been very easy for this team to turn on the fans and turn on the situation and say, you know what, F them, screw this, I'm not doing nothing. The players could have been demoralized, the players could have quit, and it could have got really out of hand against a team that's really good. You know, it could have been 42-7. to It could have been 35-7. No one would have blamed the Saints for losing, like I said, 42-10 to or something with that start, right? But we're sitting there, the Saints score, right? It's 21-7. They score again. They score again. And all of a sudden, it's a three-point game, and we're looking around like people didn't know to cheer or boo. It, they were really, really confused, including me, really confused in the stands. Because at that point, 
everyone was so done. They were so, I'm out. They were so, let's look forward to next season. We were talking about head coaches, offensive coordinators, DC. We were talking about all that stuff in the stands. And then when the Saints started to come back, everyone looked around like, damn. You know, like, we, what do we do now? What happens if they win? What happens if all that stuff we've been saying for the, for the last quarter and a half, what if they somehow have this miraculous win? And, I mean, it, it really was a shift in the stance. And it, it was such a crazy thing to feel. I mean, I'm going to talk about that in every video we do because I couldn't believe the feeling. I couldn't believe what was happening in the stands. And then you could even see, you could see people in the stands start to kind of act like the team, right? At the beginning, everyone was booing. Everybody. Then it was kind of a kind of a silence, like People were just kind of confused on what to do. Then there was a couple of fans who, on third down, they would start to kind of get kind of get rowdy. You know, on good plays for the offense, they would kind of start to cheer. Then they would start to kind of look backwards like, hey, where's everybody else? They were trying to rile up the fans. By the end of the game, the fans were back into it. The fans were back into, we're here for this team, whatever. So the team kind of did, kind of went on this journey. The fans kind of went on this journey. And I really do believe, and I mean, today is Monday, so we'll see. I really do believe this game was good for the players. This game was good for the fans. It was good for the community. Now, caveat, this won't mean nothing if the Saints lose to Carolina next week. This won't mean nothing if the Saints lose to the Giants after that. This won't mean, say it for me in the back, nothing. If the Saints lose to Tampa or Atlanta or or the Rams, okay? But if the Saints can can use this as fuel, and if the Saints can kind of go on this win streak, I think this is one of those moments where you kind of get your ass kicked, you you know, you kind of get your, your, your nose shoved in it, but you kind of come out of the other side. You know, you persevere, you survive, you get through, you take your lumps, and you push through. This could be that moment for Derek Carr. It could be that moment for the Saints. So, very, very mixed bag as far as, like, how how you can feel coming out of this game. Post-game coverage presented by Matt Bowers Auto Group. Of course. I'm Brooke Kirchhofer. The boos were so loud in the Superdome that it would be hard for anybody in the building to not hear it. New Orleans zone and Saints safety Tyron Matthew was especially emotional when asked about the boos. You know, it's disappointing. You know, obviously, um, you know, I think we all need to play better. Um, you know, I think growing up in this city, it's no secret that we're all invested. You know what I mean? And uh, so, obviously, they, they have a right to um, apply pressure, so to speak. Um, but at the end of the day, man, uh, you know, we want family. We want community. And um, it's going to take all of us. There should never be bulls in the home stadium. Well, I'll let him finish. Uh, but just got to be, our play just got to be better. Okay, that's what, I, that's what I was hoping he would say. And, and that is, I, it, it's easy for me to say. But the boos were coming from, and they are coming from a place of love, like from the fans. The, fa- the Saints fans are as invested in the Saints as any team in the NFL. You know, like the, the, any team in the NFL's fans the Saints are way up there with dedicated, invested, all that stuff. And they are tired of this. We're going on now two seasons of this. And especially what we're watching this year, especially with what the specific things we're watching this year, with Derek Carr, the, the lack of, of the offense, the check downs, you know, the, at the beginning of the year it was the offensive line, with the fact that we can't run the ball, then it's the personnel issues. I mean, there's very specific markers and indicators that the fans are watching from this team week after week after week, three and outs, you know, things like that. So when all of that happened at the beginning of the game, it really was a boiling point. And it really was from the fans and the players, just so much frustration, you know, and just so much, so much just, I I don't know. And you never see that in an NFL game because you know, the NFL, if you go to an NFL game, a lot of the times it's very, like, that That one singular game is kind of an event. People go, it might be the only game they go to that year, so they're having a good time, you know, like, 
they're they're partying. There's, a lot of people take like buses or, or limos or whatever to the game. It's a huge event. So very rarely in an NFL game will you have fans that are that vocal. A lot of the times that'll happen at like a basketball game or a baseball game where the same fans go to a bunch of games and they and they kind of feel the ebbs and flows of the seasons. A lot of the time the people trust me. The people in the stands around me on home games, they 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 don't know anything. They they barely even know the record of the team. They barely know who who the players are. You know, they're just there for the event. But for everybody to be so universally on the same page to boo to cheer to boo to cheer to it, it was just it really felt like a weird like cultural moment it felt like a it almost felt like the ain'ts era like the brown paper bags it felt like all of that like condensed into one moment it felt like you were part of something that was you would never forget it was it was and i'm not saying this is positive you know i'm not saying like it's something I'll never forget. I, would, I love booing. I love doing I'm not, I'm not saying that. It just felt like a moment for the team, for the franchise, for these players, for the fans. It felt like a moment that will define this chapter of the Saints, this chapter of these guys, whether it's Derek Carr or Chris Olave or, or you know, a lot of the, even the Cam Jordans and, and people like that who, this is that chapter, you know. So this was a, chapter era however you want to say it defining moment for this team first do you feel like they were maybe warranted uh i don't know <laughs> i mean like i said we just got to be better as a team and just keep moving forward Regardless of the booing, the Saints responded in the second quarter and go. coming yep. out of the half, showing fight to stay in yep. this game. The Saints were perfect in the red zone going four for four and getting Jimmy Graham involved in that area of the field. But in the fourth quarter, with all of the momentum in the Saints' favor, quarterback Derek Carr went down with yeah, extensive oh, injuries. He is I thought, currently I thought, being I thought she was going to mention the fumble. So the fumble was awful. Fumble was terrible. Uh, you know, so much momentum. If we don't fumble there... I mean, the way we were kind of moving, the way the momentum was, we, we, we honestly probably do score there. And back, to back up to what Brooke just said, I mentioned this in my recap. There are positives that we can take away from this game. I said it there, and I'll say it again. I think this was the best our offense looked for an entire game, minus the first couple of possessions. Not every, not every possession is going to be perfect, but this is the best our offense looked in a game since the Indianapolis game. We look better here than we did against Atlanta, Minnesota, the Bears, and the Lions are a way better defense than Atlanta, Minnesota, and the Bears. The Saints did look okay once they kind of got over those first couple of possessions. And those first couple of possessions, like, I don't know what the scheme was. I don't know what the plan was from Pistol Pete, but it just seemed so disjointed. It seemed so random. It seemed so frenetic. I mean, there was... If you go back and watch it, I mean, it seemed like Carr was rotating with Hill at quarterback every other play. It seemed like Alvin Kamara was was back to being rotated off every single play. It seemed like it was just a lot happening. And once that kind of cooled off, and once we got to, okay, Chris Olave is our best receiver. Get him the ball. Okay, Alvin Kamara is our best running back. Let's get him on the field. Let's get him involved. Taysom Hill is kind of the engine to this offense. Okay, let's get him involved. Once we got to that, we were moving. We were rolling. I mean, the Saints were pushing it downfield. The Saints were picking up first downs. The Saints were good in the red zone. It wasn't a Blake Groupie festival. We scored points. All that was very positive. All if you take away the start, if you just pretend like the start didn't happen, but the rest of the game happened like that, and we lose by five points or whatever against the Lions, and we look the way we look, I think a lot of people will be coming out of that saying, "Damn." Okay, we can build on this. You know, like the Lions are way better than the Panthers, the Giants, the the Rams, the uh, Buccaneers, the Falcons. Okay, you know, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for some identity. We're looking for some life here. The problem with this game is so much is going to be baked into that first six minutes. So much is going to be talked about, about the boos and the, the 21 nothing and, and the three and outs and the punts and the negative yardage. But we got to look at the big picture here. Look at what we're doing. Now, again, you know, it's like, will the Saints build on this? Have they ever been consistent with any of this? Not really. Now we have the car, who was basically in a car accident. I mean, concussion, back, ribs, shoulder. I mean, 
if, if he falls out of a helicopter, he'll probably suffer the same injuries. Like, a devastating injuries. I don't know if he'll play. Uh, J, you know, Jameis, certainly a capable backup. Taysom, you know, the way that we kind of play, like, Taysom's going to get a lot of snaps at quarterback, so Jameis will be limited in what he's asked to do. As far as Taysom, like, when I say snaps at quarterback, I mean, it's running as well, you know, taking that direct snap. So, you know, I mean... The Saints are in a good position if you have to go to the backup, especially playing Carolina, such a bad team. Uh, but, Car- you know, when Carr, when they brought the stretcher out, or the cart, and Carr was on the turf, we all initially thought it was broken ribs because of the way he was driven into the ground. It shows the toughness. It shows the, the situational awareness of Carr to get up, walk off on his own, not get on the cart. It felt like a Disney movie, ladies and gentlemen. It felt like some kind of weird movie where... Everything that happened was just like you can almost see like Carr Carr had picked himself up in the first quarter, picked himself up and and dusted himself off and listened to the booze and took all that on the chin, you know, did what he did what he had to do to get the team back and then gets that injury, gets up, declines the cart, walks off, you know, I mean it this was this really was like a TV show inside of a football game. The football game was secondary to what we were watching happen on the sidelines, in the stands, uh, on, and just everything. The last thing people were concerned about was like, oh, it's second and seven. It was, it was so much other stuff happening. I mean, it was just really a wild thing. Evaluated for a concussion, shoulder, and back injury. When Jameis mm-hmm. Winston entered the game, the Saints were down 33 to 21. He got the Saints close, but couldn't find the end zone on the Saints last possession, falling 33 to 28 to the Detroit line. I would have cut my arm off to watch Jameis with a minute left down five. I mean, I, I, that would have been the Disney movie magic. I mean, it really was. And it was set up for it. And then the, they get the first down and, and kill the clock. But Lions. I am sick. Um, obviously, I don't feel good. You know, um, yeah, I mean, don't feel good, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, it sucks because, you know what I'm saying, when you when you play a team, you know, you feel like you should have won. Um, when everything was right there in front of you, and you don't. So, uh, you know, don't feel good, so. Yeah, look, I mean, our guys, our guys fought, all right? We weren't perfect. I didn't like the the execution early on. I thought it got better as the game went on. I did see explosive plays down the field, which I thought we could, you know, potentially create. Um, so yeah, I mean, I saw I saw some things that I liked, and yet uh, there's a few mistakes that you know end up handful of plays that kind of end up costing you the game, and those are the plays that we have to eliminate. The Saints defense and an offensive turnover put them in a hole early, down 21 to nothing in the first quarter. The Saints also gave up 142 rushing yards to the Lions. And while they were able to manage wide receiver Amon Ross St. Brown with just two catches, that opened things up for tight end Sam Laporta, who finished the game with nine catches for 140 yards. Uh, I don't think it's any one thing specific. I think that, um, you know, we just got to, I, I agree. Like, I don't think it's one thing specific. And I think Dennis gets this, like, I think he gets kind of lost where a lot of the times when he's talking about what happened, he makes it sound like everything has to be perfect. No game is going to be perfect. You're never going to, you're never going to come out of a game and be like, we won because we executed every phase of the game. We won because we ran, we passed, we defended, we did this, we did that. That's never going to happen. The Saints have to figure out, like, how to win through the the ups and downs of just a game through the mishaps of a game and through the the stuff that happens you will have turnovers you will have penalties you will have things that happen the saints just have a really hard time and i think it's because of carmichael and allen they have a really hard time of just kind of navigating those waters after this game and we're moving on from this game or after you know through the rest of the season i would focus on the players if i was giving some advice to the Saints fans. Because I, I do believe Allen and Carmichael are done. I think they've just, you know, they've, they've proven what they've proven what they are. But I think these players deserve a chance, I guess. I mean, I, I even Carr. I know people are not going to like that. I think even Carr you know, might, might deserve a chance. And I'm, I'm more focused on how the team responds. I'm more focused on how the roster responds. I'm more focused on how 
you know, what we hear from these guys during this week, during the media availability, that's what I'm focused on. I want to see that. I don't, I'm, I'm less concerned now with the Pete Carmichael play calling numbers. I'm, I'm less concerned with the Dennis Allen stuff and because those two are obviously not, not it, but the guts and the gumption word of the day and, and the wherewithal second word of the day that, that this team showed I, that that's a roster that you can get behind. That's a roster that you can believe in. That is a, that's exactly what we've wanted to see for this team all, all year long. And if it took this, like, I don't know if y'all have ever worked with somebody or had a coworker or even a friend that might've gone through this, but they may like slack off at work. I'm not saying the same for slacking off, but they may slack off at work or they may like just not get it. Or they may do a bad job or they may do whatever. And they may get told like, look, you're going on probation or suspension or you're about to get fired. You know, like you're about to get canned. You're about to get the hell out of here. If you don't turn your, turn your uh, stuff around. Some people, that breaks them. Some people, they just say, you know what? F this. I don't need this stinking job. I'm getting the hell out of here. And they'll quit, and they'll never see them again. Some people will get demoralized, and they'll say, you know what? I'm, who cares? They're yelling at me. They're getting on to me. I'm not worried about this. But some people, some people do take that, and they say, okay, I got to get myself together here. I got to be better. I got to do better. I got I to gotta do a better job. And sometimes they grow. And sometimes that like hardship moment, that like back against the wall moment, that pushed on the ground moment, you know, hit rock bottom, whatever. Sometimes that it just kind of gives you the wake up call you need. 24 hours after the game, after the dome dogs digested, after the double crown and soda, and after the multiple Bloody Marys, and you know, after all that settled, I think this team might be might be the team, might be the roster that can take that wake-up call, can take the booze, can listen to the fans and say, you know what, okay, okay, you're right. This isn't what you deserve. This isn't the Saints team you should expect. You're right. I think we're going to get a big performance down the stretch. I really do. I think we're going to get a big performance against Carolina. I think we're going to get a big performance against the Giants. And then it's can you go three and zero? Can you beat the Bucks, the Rams, and the Falcons? Can you beat them to win the division, to win ten games, go to the playoffs? I don't know, guys. Listen, I just got chills thinking about it. I just got goosebumps. But I believe in this team. Maybe I'm a fool. Maybe I'm maybe I'm a spurned lover. You know. Had his heart broken too many times and just can't quit. Can't quit him. You know, keep going back. Heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak. Maybe, 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 maybe that's me. Or maybe. Maybe this team has something left. I don't know. Kind of pre-plan for the for what they're gonna do a little better. Um, because once we see it a few times, we see, you know, what our defense is capable of and or our team is capable of, not even just defense. So I think it's just, um, you know, having the, having the looks scouted a little. Um. Well, if that's the case, that's on Dennis Allen. I mean, everything he just said, like, we, once we see it, we're pretty much good. We just need to have a little more preparation. I mean, Dennis Allen is supposed to be a defensive, defensive genius, L-O-L. Uh, he's supposed to be a defensive gen- genius, and we're, we're having these problems. So that's squarely on Allen. But again... I could sit here and go on a 10-minute diatribe about how Dennis Allen is 20 and 41 as, or 50 as a head coach or whatever. He's losing as head coach in NFL history, which he is. I could go on that tirade. Y'all have heard that before. But I'm not concerned about Dennis Allen. I'm not concerned about his future. His future is not with New Orleans. His future is not with the Saints. Okay? So I'm not... I, I agree. Yeah, he probably could be doing a better job scouting. Yeah, he probably could be doing a better job. No doubt. But... I'm concerned about these players. You know, a little stronger, and then that way that we can start off faster and then continue to do what we already have been doing for, uh, to finish the game. In the loss, Alvin Kamara became the Saints' new all-time leader yep. in rushing Standing touchdowns, ovation. and they were able to get Chris yep. Olave going, but it was not enough to knock off the now 9-3 and three Detroit Lions. We will continue mm-hmm. breaking down the Saints' loss live on New Orleans.Football on YouTube. We'll see you there. Thank you very much. Great video per usual. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a fun week of content. I'll tell you that. It's going to be a fun week of content. I'm glad to be moved into the new studio. Stuff's kind of figuring itself out, trying to get everything going. 
you know, so again, if you hear different audio, see different lighting, whatever, bear with me. Even through a move, even through moving and doing all this other stuff, we're still we're, we're still the best channel. Let me tell you this right now. We're still the best channel on YouTube. No one in this space, no one in New Orleans media, no one in sports media can do what we can do on this channel here. Thank you all for joining me on this journey. Thank you all for being a part of this ride, this channel. This channel would not be where it's at. It would not be the fastest rising, fastest growing channel in New Orleans sports media. It wouldn't be doing that without the support of each and every one of you. Thank you very much. I know Thanksgiving is weeks ago, but I give thanks to each and every one of you for spending your time with me, allowing me to entertain, allowing me to talk to the masses. Much appreciated. I will see you in the next video.